Are you stuck in a weight loss plateau with no idea how to continue seeing progress? Are you tired of hearing the same old advice that doesn't seem to work? Well, you're in luck because this is everything you need to know to overcome your weight loss plateau and start seeing progress again from today. First off, what is a weight loss plateau and why are you in one? This essentially occurs when your body stops losing weight altogether despite you sticking to your current dieting and exercise plan. This happens for three main reasons. Reason one, as you lose weight, your metabolism slows down because now your body requires fewer calories in order to carry around your now smaller body mass and Overall, it just requires fewer calories in order to survive. Reason number two. More often than not, as we enter weight loss periods, muscle loss can also occur, especially if you were to go down the extreme weight loss route. And also, by the way, during long, drawn out periods within a caloric deficit. Now, since having more muscle tissue in our bodies burns more calories compared to having more fat, that's exactly why our metabolism slows down when or if we were to also lose muscle. Thirdly, over time, your body not only becomes more efficient at utilizing the calories you are consuming, but now also requires less food and an adjustment to your overall macronutrients. In most cases too, a change in food choice is also recommended, as well as a shift towards more nutrient and volume dense foods. Now let's talk about some strategies that you can implement in order to break through a plateau. Firstly, re-evaluate your caloric intake, meaning you must at the very least track your calories across one whole week in order to calculate what your average caloric intake is. Get a food scale, measure out each and every single meal at the very least for one week. This way you can identify whether or not you are truly in a caloric deficit. Now a caloric deficit means either burning more calories than you consume or consuming less calories than you burn. Of course you can have a combination of the two, so a combination of exercise as well as being on a nutrition plan. But at the end of the day, this metric, so the caloric deficit, will ultimately determine whether or not you gain or lose weight, period. So now that you've calculated what your average caloric needs are, based on the foods that you are consuming across the week, what you can now do is go online, search for a free macronutrient calculator, and find exactly what your caloric needs are are based on your weight, your height, and your current activity level. From there, you can literally find the exact number, protein, macronutrients, carbs, and fats that you require to consume in order to achieve your goals. You'll most likely find that your current caloric intake is at maintenance or slightly above, which means you are consuming enough calories to maintain your current weight, or in some cases, slowly gain weight back. Now understand this is the case because now you weigh significantly less. So in order to continue seeing progress towards your weight loss and fat loss goals again, you must put your body in a caloric deficit again. Adjust your calories, adjust your caloric intake, eat slightly less food in order to put yourself below your maintenance calories. I recommend the majority of my clients sit between 300 and 700 calories below their maintenance. Another key strategy to implement is changing your macronutrient ratios. For example, increasing your protein intake and adjusting your carbohydrates and fats. The reason increasing your protein intake is so important is because protein not only satiates you for longer, but it has a greater thermogenic effect when it comes to weight loss, meaning you become fuller for longer when you consume more quality protein and your body burns more calories when it digests protein as well. When it comes to carbs and fats, my recommendation is that you should not be consuming in excess of 25% of your total calories and caloric intake in fats. 
So don't consume more than 25% of your calories in fats. The reason this is important is because one, fats contain more calories per gram, fats are more caloric dense, and you're gonna be less fuller for longer when you consume more fats. So no greater than 25%. The remainder should be 25 to 30% in protein and 50 to 55% in carbohydrates. That is my ultimate recommendation because our muscles store the majority of this glycogen, upwards of 70%. So when it comes to our workouts, our cardio, our exercise sessions, not only are we going to have more energy for longer, we're going to be able to have more efficient and effective workouts. And for the remainder of our days, we're going to still have energy in order to perform. You got to understand that your workout is only going for what? An hour, an hour and a half? You don't want to gas out and flatline after you complete your workout. You still want to have energy. So that's exactly why I recommend that exact caloric and macronutrient breakdown. Keep in mind as well that if you're a larger individual, the total percentage of your protein from your calories should actually be more like 25%, so not 30%. Another important strategy that you can literally implement from today is making sure that you're having more intense workouts. If you aren't already, progress from week to week, whether that's through more intense exercises, like incorporating more compound exercises, whether that's by increasing repetitions or having supersets or drop sets, whether that's by increasing your weight or improving on your technique, tempo, and the list goes on. But you must be progressive overloading. If your current workout and training routine literally only consists of cardio, you are doing yourself an injustice. Go down to the weight machines, go down to the pin loaded machines and incorporate some form of resistance training. Over time, as you build muscle, you are literally going to be burning more calories in the long run in comparison to solely walking, running on the treadmill. The reason that's the case is exactly what I mentioned from before. When we have more muscle tissue in our bodies, we not only increase our metabolism, but as our strength increases, we are burning more calories during our workouts as we incorporate more compound lifts, as we incorporate more supersets and drop sets, as we increase the duration since we are more physically fit and capable. And again, the list goes on. But having more muscle will in the long term and as well as in the short term equal more calories burnt in comparison to just solely walking, running on the treadmill. One more tip when it comes to training and working out. If you're already incorporating cardio and weightlifting, but you're still stuck in a weight loss plateau, despite already making the changes that I mentioned from earlier, your body has most likely already adapted to your current workout and training plan. So try new exercises, new techniques like the superset and drop set. Just make sure that you are progressing in some way, shape or form and overall just changing your plan. Finally, here are some rapid fire tips for you to implement. Managing stress. The more you are stressed, the more your cortisol levels spike and the more your fat stores particularly around your abdomen region, so your love handles. Then, making sure that you are sleeping enough hours consistently per night, between seven and nine hours. For me, 7.5 hours is absolutely perfect and what I typically recommend. If you are sleep deprived, not only are you gonna have less energy, not only are you gonna have less motivation, to stick to your plan, but your hunger cravings will actually increase due to the hormone called gremlin, like a gremlin, literally like a gremlin stuffing your face with food. Next, we have making sure that you are drinking enough water and remaining hydrated. Our muscles, our bodies need this water, our organs need this water. When you are weightlifting, when you are dieting, the recommendation is a minimum of three liters of water per day. That is non-negotiable. Finally, we also have tracking your progress. Because each body is unique, some things that might not work for you may work for someone else or vice versa. So finding exactly what you are doing now that isn't or is working to make sure that you change things that aren't and implement more of what is, is the way to go. I really hope that made sense. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that wraps up today's video. If you learned something from today's video, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, 
Comment below. If you want to debate me down in the comment section, feel free to. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.